second. Actually, mute that for a second. So, Vidar. It's a piece of shit, in case you haven't looked. It says Vidar here. Very, very weird letters that disappear in the right angle. They just don't exist. But look, see it, and then you don't see it. And I removed the cover, because there was nothing that says it's gonna avoid the warranty. And it's eight screws, and it comes out, and I'm pretty sure it's part of the structure. Because it's, it's actually wonderfully designed to put together. Because here are the screw holes. One, two, three, four, times two. Right into these giant heatsink blocks. Which, look at the thickness of that. That is, that is some... No wonder this thing gets so hot and stays hot forever. So, this is shit's first just amplifier. It's just an amplifier. It's just, just an amplifier. It's just a solid state amplifier, and I had to. So I don't know why it weighed 22 pounds because it's not huge. I mean that's huge, but it's not huge. It's not. It's not thick with extra C's. It's. It's. Uh. But it's. Uh. uh. So here, I'll throw the cover back on it in a second. We've got four. Looks like 10,000 microfarad things running 63 volters. Some reverse coils, some beautiful indicators. Everything's very simple, very clean, very neat. White LED, all the heat. And this thing does get, like, hot. Like, I think I took my uh, infrared thermometer out way after it had been running for, like, a full day. Like, I just left on overnight. And the whole thing was, like, 107 degrees. Every every part of it, the top, the sides, everything was just, it just I left it running because it's cold, it's winter. So let's just heat up my apartment with this. Or inputs or outputs. Giant fucking transformer, just fucking giant. These heat sinks are absolutely insanely thick. What kind of power, CEOs? CEOs, what kind of power? And can you show us the back? And I'm trying. I'm trying. Uh, this thing is just so heavy. And I don't want to mess up my table so it's on a cutting board. It, it's beauty in simplicity itself. You've got left and right five way binding posts. They unscrew, they're great. By the way, the uh, mica cables, amazing, look how beautiful they are. We've got a set of Amazon Basics RCAs going into the left and right RCAs. If you look down there, there's a single XLR input, which if you monoblock these, there's no switch, you just have to monoblock them with an XLR. So I had this in my living room for a little bit. I only have one, which was loaned to me by a fan, the same one who loaned me the Freya. Freya. So I put, Want, put this in my left channel, and I put my I left my A500 Behringer as my right channel. Now this has no volume knob. This has nothing. This is a power amp. This is a plug-in power from the wall. Which, by the way, right now sitting still, I know this is using 15 watts. That's showing 60. That's 45 watts doing nothing. Just just 45 watts to sit here and look pretty. It claims power consumption maximum on the thing is 700 watts maximum. I hate to think what that would require because it is a 100 watts per channel. It's only 100, only 100 watts per channel, eight ohms. So if you're running eight ohm speakers, which these are not, but if you're running eight ohm speakers, which is like the normal r rough uh, resistance of speakers, you need 100 watts a channel and that's what this will output. 200 watts a channel at four ohm which not many amps will handle four ohms. A couple of class D uh, smaller amps are actually really good at those, but 200 watts a channel, you don't get out of that. And then if you bridge mono, and IE that means plug in an XLR, and this is just, these two top terminals become, this one's positive and this one's negative, and that's how you plug in one speaker to it. Then you're looking at 400 watts for the whole box. One input, one speaker output, 400 watts. And comparing that to the Behringer A500, which when you do it in monoblock is 600 watts at 8 ohm, and that's also at 8 ohm, doesn't list anything lower than that, that's not, I mean, this is $700. That's the point, is this is $700, and it is a very simple, very clean, very good amplifier. But when I had it in my living room, doing one channel and the Behringer doing the other, I had to lower the Behringer down, because it, this couldn't keep up, and then... I couldn't really tell a difference in my living room. That being said, we're not in my living room anymore. We're on my desk and we are 
this far away from some of the greatest speakers I've ever put on a desk. So that's how you judge an amplifier. I am currently using the uh, Mackie Big Knob Studio here as my DAC and preamp because since this is a power amp, there's nothing to control the volume. If I just plugged uh, like the Sanskrit or any of these DACs just straight into it and I had my FUBAR up to full, uh, these speakers would not be happy. You need a volume knob and this is, the big knob is all about the knob. So we get to feather in the power. What is this? It's gotta be Mad Max. It's gotta be Mad Max. Yeah, yeah. Pursuit and Tragedy from the original Mad Max. Powerman 5000. Handsome family. I just want to stare at my monitor while I pick things. Frog Philharmonic. Otis Taylor, absinthe. Now, if you watch my review of the Big Knob, which probably came out before this, I have 16 decibels cut off in FUBAR, which is just like, I just it needs to be down that low, or else this thing shows inputs well over zero. And then I've got it trimmed to probably negative another eight, and then I can use the volume knob. So I could make this. That's, that's one of the most intense experiences of my uh, career. Just because the power is here. These are six ohm, by the way. So if eight ohm is 100 watts and four ohm is 200 watts, we could go by math and assume this is 150 watts a channel. Really, a really real 150 watts channel with lots of power stored up and heat dissipating behind it. I don't want to spit in it. It's the only thing I'm concerned about. I have no other concerns on this earth, but in electrocution, what's that? I just don't want to spit in it. Now this thing made, in, here, here's why this is $700. Because it's an amplifier that's actually made in America. Which is everything shit is, but I forget to mention it sometimes. And then I'm going to rewatch the video because I have to. I'm like, damn it. I got to remind people that that is important. If you're 51% of my audience, I think is still American. But 49%, which is right about half, isn't. You're Canadians and Mexicans and European and Southeast Asian and from the Middle East. Hello, Middle East. Stop killing each other. It's my orders. Imagine if I just said that and like all the all the war across the world stop just stop all wars thanks but anyway it's so hard to find good things made in america if i sent you out with a trillion dollars and said buy every american made amplifier you'd find them you'd find them you'd, you'd have a truckload of them then i said okay now take out the ones that are vintage and find new ones and you'd have still a pretty big truck full of them however they would all be the ones that are at the audio shows that are 15, 18, 23, 45,000 dollars each. So finding a sub $1,000 American made amplifier that looks sexy is a good form factor because I mean the Behringer is a big wide rack mount thing that you know eh. so this is a little, little narrower look at ooh it's ooh that you can run bridge mono cleanly and um, that's the word, because listen. That's right, you don't fucking hear anything. Because it's sitting here idling, and uh, you don't, don't, you, you just don't, you, you just don't. Hold on, checking something. 60 v, 600 VA transformer inside, it's a big, uh, class AB. So it is still class AB. But it runs so warm. You could if you're if you if you're cold, you just do this, and you sit there and you listen to your music, and you warm up your hands. Uh, also, the edges of these criminally sharp. Don't make a box that's sort of awkward to carry, and expensive. Don't make it sharp too. Just just take it and go, and just trim these 
murder edges down. And I probably would raise the cost $15, but it might be worth it. What this is lacking is not quality, it's some features. Just just a, a fucking modicum. 12 volt trigger would be amazing because it's on right now. It'll never shut off, it'll never go to standby. It's just gonna be on. It's gonna get hot and it's gonna sit there. It's gonna draw, it's 45 watts and just sit there. And shit is like, yeah, it's fine. It's fine, just 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 leave it on all the time. Cause that's their shit, they don't. We, we, we stand by our product, leave it on all the time. Yeah, but if you have two of these in monoblock, that's 90 watts. So you either have to start figuring out a 110 solution that turns it on and off, or reach behind it every time. Uh, and it's under it. There we go. And shut it off. Now, it does take a second to come on. It's not instantaneous. It's not like, oh, it's on. So let's see, I have that volume up. Love and Spoonful, hell yeah. What's a good Love and Spoonful song? What's the Love and Spoonful song? Summer in the City, hell yeah. All right, so let's go boom, right to Summer in the City. We're at half volume, I'm gonna listen to music. So a little bit of a delay, not ter not not Freya, like warming up tubes, but enough of a delay to be like, mmm. It is very pretty. Considering the simplicity of it, it's very pretty. Little vents here, the vents inside. You got the shape, it, ooh, it has a shit logo on top. I, and I don't know why it seems like Macintosh and Behringer are the only ones that are stepping into the actual ability to put a goddamn VU. I like VUs. I like, see these analog ones? These are vintage Japanese. You know how much I paid for this pair? Like $22. And the controller was like $7. And when I have them up and running, I just, ooh, this needs an indicator, something. It needs a clip, and it needs some indicators. It needs some indicator. I mean, it's got an on. It shows you that's on. Make it $850 and give me a Knight Rider style green, amber, red, just. Mm, right there or up on the sides. That's all I want. I'm gonna start yelling till things happen the way I like them to happen. I'm pretty sure if you bought one of these for your desk, A, you're insane. How you doing? I'm Zeos. If you like literally what you're looking at here would be if Zeos didn't review headphones and speakers, he would eventually have ended up with something like this. I don't know if I'd end up with the big knob, but it's working for my case right now. I would definitely end up with these. In fact, I have ended up with these. And then I would have probably been forced into this. Run the jewels. Just, just New Yorkians. Okay. So made in USA, and I won't make that noise once I screw it back together. Made in the USA is a fantastic little I'm gonna call it like a like icing on the cake. Because what you're buying this for is because you want a clean, high power amplifier, right? So you get that. So what else is there? Because this is not much to talk about with this unit. I'm sitting here you know, dicking around, going, oh, I love Run the Jewels and anime panties and doo -doo, doo 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 So in the end, it just comes down to how does it sound and is there noise and does, is there any problems? And it sounds fuck all fantastic. You're never... The Emotiva Basex there is 50 watts a channel. And this is 100, so it's, it's double. But double's not much in the world of audio. If you know anything about how three decibel gains work and it's just really 3 db but it's there's this the word is is headroom and headroom you can taste you don't actually hear it you taste it you taste it when you push something up Ooh, 
and you get to the volume where you think you're like that's as loud as it should ever play and you can just tell that the bass when you push something up sometimes it gets real near the end and then like something won't it's only only parts of it will go up and other things will be left behind because it just it just isn't capable of doing it but on this on this with this I'm pushing this louder and louder and louder and there's no doubt that it could just keep going. It could just keep going until everything got destroyed. I was looking for replacement amplifiers for my living room because the A500s, I love them, but I've clipped, I've clipped those amps and damaged speakers. Now, if those are truly pushing out 600 fucking watts, that means I need some hella amps. And the fact that this is only a four, only, only 400 watts, poo poo, where do I go from there? So I'm looking right now. If you have any thoughts on mono blockable or mono amplifiers, class A, class AB, class T, class D, digital ones. I know uh, my tech has got some that I'd love to get a hold of. Uh, that Red Dragon Audio, I've, I've tried to contact them and they sort of disappeared. I wanna know what the best way to get a thousand watts per channel in my living room is. Because it's not these, because I just put them up. A pair of these would only be less than what I've got now, which is sad to say. But this is a cleaner amp than the Behringer. I know from sitting here in front of it, it's a cleaner amp than the Behringer. In the living room, much, much harder to tell. So let's... <sighs> From Game of Thrones. Back to the Future 3. Chocolate Insomnia. Dirty Vegas. Dio. You, can you hear that through the GoPro? That just slap of bass that is just, like it could keep getting slapped harder and harder and that is insane. Yeah, that is a, this is a potential bringer. It brings all the potential of your speakers, no matter how hard they are, to the table. Literally to the table. In my living room, I have bigger needs than this. And that's pretty insane. So yeah, let's... um. This is Dead Mouse's sex slave, by the way, because you're all going to ask. Baby, make me make that sound. Okay. Let's shut this off. I'm gonna unplug it from all its things so you can actually have a proper look at the back. Try not to cut my hand open. Good kitty. Made in USA, 750 watts. Oh, the highest I saw it draw, by the way, I should probably tell you that and that was on this desk with these speakers, was like 85, which if you take out the 15 watts that this is drawing currently, 15.3 actually, it means you're drawing 70 watts. So I don't know how you get 700 watts drawn out of this. I don't know how, but there's a possibility, so keep that in mind. Intelligent power amplifier. Anything else on the site that I need to talk about? Any other checkbox and specs? Because, I mean... The THD is 0.01%, which is low, low enough. I mean, it's damn low. I mean, my father's Pioneer uh, VSX D1S was Japanese made, and that was from 1994, one, and it claimed 0.003% THD. And that was 130 watts per channel into 8 ohms. So I really should go back to the Bronx and pick that thing up. That thing was a monster. But yeah, no, I mean, no, yeah. Fully complimentary, but all but JBD current feedback, no coupling capacitors or DC servos. It's a very simplified amp. They did a very good job of simplifying the design. I've opened up some amplifiers and it's just a crazy fucking mess in there. So simple is good. 22 pounds. So yeah. I have to give this, I'm going to give this an A minus, not an A plus. It didn't blow my mind. It's probably the most 
suitably sized amplifier you could put on a desk. I mean, I'm talking about a fucking 700 watt, $700, 100 watt per channel amplifier on a desk. But honestly, if you're not putting studio monitors in your desk and you're putting something like this, something that's very specific, great for near field, the Bucard S200s or those uh, mono price Kvass, and you want just unlimited potential, you want the last amplifier you need to buy for a desk, here it is. For a living room, you're probably gonna need a pair of these. They're looking at 1400 bucks. And it's gonna be clean. And I don't wanna say it's gonna be too little power, but if you've got anything more demanding than an eight ohm speaker, it's a, if it's got a six or a four ohm speaker in there, you gotta watch out because it doesn't list the specs for what a four ohm impedance will push on um, monoblock. So overall, A minus. I think it needs 12 volt trigger or a power switch on the front. Like, I'm asking shit for a power switch in the front now. So what is that, like the 14th time? I mean, nothing here has a power switch. Well, look, look, here's a power switch in the front, and this one does, and this one does, and that one doesn't. But at least that'll go to auto standby. This thing won't even auto standby. It's just gonna sit there getting hot the entire time. So a few little tweaks, little quirks. Maybe a clip indicator on the power LED would be nice. Cause I'd like to, at least on my Behringer amps, I see on the little, little shitty VUs when it's getting near the end of the capabilities and then the little red light comes on and that's when speaker damage is gonna occur. And I don't know where it is on this and I'm afraid to push too hard. Cause it will clip, every amp will clip. You put enough of a load in it. I don't know where this is gonna clip. Oh. Mm. It's so adorable. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. Okay, I'm putting this down before I cut my hands open and end this review. It's actually not that heavy because I'm a strong bastard. But, um, yes. Yes. A minus. A minus shit. Couple little tweaks. The price is going to stay $700 because it's made in America. And that's literally the cheapest by a very big margin that you can get an American made uh, amplifier that isn't, you know, vintage. So I approve, a couple tweaks, 12 volt trigger would be nice. And I was honestly, I want more power, but I'm a lunatic. So I'm gonna probably plug all this back in now because it's, it's still playing dead mouse. So burp.